everybody thank you for joining us i am pixie from planet pixie and i plan weddings and events with the difference i'm joined this evening by philip from bwr london good evening hi how are you yeah very well thank you good good thank you so uh, before we get started if anybody's uh, watching along wants to ask any questions uh, please do feel to comment uh, say hello um if you haven't previously please do give Streamyard permission to see your name so we know that it's you um and if you're watching on the replay please do hashtag replay and still feel free to ask us any questions and we'll come back to you so philip tell us what you do um bwr london is bespoke wedding rings and that's exactly what we do. So if you're looking for wedding rings, um, we can help with just about anything you want. Um, and that's it in a nutshell, really. We do diamond rings, patterned rings, laser cut rings, plain rings. Um, the one thing that we can't do um, is to do wedding rings in things like titanium and cobalt and all of the uh, harder metals that uh, people are, are looking at, some people are looking at them these days. Uh, we can do them in silver, gold, all different colors of gold, different carrots, platinum, um, palladium, which is a relatively new metal to come through in the jewelry industry. And um, we have two grades of palladium. Uh, it's a bit like nine karat gold and 18 karat gold. We have palladium 500 and palladium 950. Um, and that works quite well for men's rings, actually, because palladium is a lot more durable than white gold. And it gives us a lower price point for a really hard wearing man's ring. Diamond rings, sapphires, rubies, you name it. And we so those of us that think these quirky engagement rings in funky shapes are a great idea until it comes to be buying a wedding band, you're the guy to come to. <laughs> that's um, that, that's always a, that's always I always find that quite amusing because the it's usually the chap that goes out and buys the engagement ring, and uh, in in some instances the man's view of what's good is. Uh, quite a bit different from the, <laughs> from his partner's view of what they're good. <laughs> and we get we get some interesting things come across uh, come across our desks with um, engagement rings. Um, but we 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 actually recently have, have joined up with a design studio um, in the southeast to so if you have a really unusual shaped wedding ring or, or any sort of uh, shaped engagement ring rather that you want to find a wedding ring for um what we can do is we can either take your engagement ring into the workshop or we have some little kits which um i have one floating around here let me just get it this is this is a this is a little kit that we've got and we can send you this in the post and basically, it's it's two different coloured putties. They're almost like Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. You mix them together, uh, put half in each container, and then you take your engagement ring and you press one side in one half and the other side in the other half. Oh, and that's a good idea. You, you pop the lids on and you send them to us in the post. Um, once we get them back what we then do is we take those imprints and we fill the imprints with resin which uh, hardens after a few minutes so we then have a plastic version of your engagement ring to work with to work with when that's a great got, idea it, yeah when we've got that uh, it goes into the scanner and it's scanned onto the computer and from there the designers can then design your wedding band or, or your shaped wedding ring around the imprint of your actual engagement ring. That's a great idea because I know people don't like parting with their rings no, and sending them off for long periods of time and, you know, yeah. people get worried about them being lost or anything that's and that's just that's don't like parting with them. People get worried about, the, you know, the stones being changed and, and all yeah. sorts of things. 
they, okay. this way this way avoids that and it allows us to work remotely as well if you're in different parts of the country yeah it is a great um, idea. So how, did, how did you get into doing this into doing the jewelry yeah uh, it's an interesting one actually because it's not my it's not been my career I'm I'm a surveyor by profession and I've spent the last oh okay I've that links to my day job <laughs> yeah I've spent the last 25 years designing shops and offices uh the interiors of them um which I which I still do but I got married or remarried myself uh four years ago and it um, transpired that uh, a member of my wife's family uh, ran a workshop where they made wedding rings and uh, we we became friends with them and I th I thought to myself with four teenage children to look after it would be quite nice to um, to to try and do that for a bit of uh, fun really for a bit of extra cash part-time but, it's extensive uh, breed them teenagers yeah they're, they are indeed and and i also thought that well once i started doing it i realized how how popular what we were offering had become um and actually there was there was a a, a brilliant business there to be built up over a period of time and and three of our children and uh, girls um ranging from 16 up to 21 and i thought it would be a great uh, business for them to move into and um, eventually take over and run in the years to come if they were interested um so that's how it started um it was demand led really the the, the feedback we were getting was brilliant and uh, if you look at the reviews on our facebook page they go back to where we started um and they've all been really really nice and the when you get that sort of feedback it's difficult not to get deeper and deeper into it and the um i suppose the, the thing that i like about it i love the the jewelry i love the products i love diamonds i love the rings i always have been interested in that and it's so nice to be able to be a part of an occasion for couples that yeah. is really such a special time and, and to be giving them something as part of their wedding that will last them for the rest of their lives. Um, yeah, definitely. And take yeah. away some of that. It, it's one of the biggest elements, isn't it? The, the ring. Yeah. And so if you can take away some of the stress from that experience, yeah, that, that's a massive massive part it, of it isn't it it is a massive part when i see the rings come back from the workshop i mean i i i'm surrounded by sample rings all the time which are beautiful in themselves um when you see them but when i see the real rings come back from the workshop i i don't think i'm ever i'm ever not amazed at how how fantastic they look and particularly with diamonds and stones and um the gems in i i just love it and so uh, it became a it became a a, a a progression really to to sort of try and build the business up. And before um, the first lockdown um, in uh, January of last year, uh, we were just starting to um, open concessions in uh, bridal shops. Um, so we opened two, one at a bridal shop in East Sussex and one at a bridal shop in Buckingham. I had 15 other bridal shops wanting to take it on board. And um, as we were getting the rings made for their displays, we uh, eventually, the, the, the whole country got locked down and the shops yeah. closed. And so uh, it all got put on hold. Now that the bridal shops are opening, we're hoping to start that up like again. That. And it's I've a got, great idea. I, I've got a, a, a plan in front of me. Of um, let me just spin the camera around. I'm, I'm just going to turn my light off while you do that because I've just realised I look. Oh, even <laughs> I look neon on uh, on Facebook. So let's turn that down. If if you can see that on my desk, that's the that's the plan of where we want to be. 
So uh, we've got a plan to open 30, 30 concessions this year. Um, and that's where we'd like to have them. Um, and it's really, actually, uh, I've deliberately spread it across, across the country, including Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, um, because what I've found is those more remote areas uh, are the areas where we've had um, a, a, a bigger response on yeah. our website. But presumably because it, it takes them longer to get to a, a city centre where they can yeah. shop products. Oh, to be honest, I've seen some very concerning, let's try and word all this without uh, getting sued by a major chain, um, so, <laughs> some concerning comments with regards to one of the UK's leading jewellers um, and what happens after a short time with the stones in their rings. Mm. Um, so I, I, I can imagine that more and more people are going to want to move away from those just generic yeah. throw well, out. I think, I think, I think in, in any industry you get, you get um, mass produced product and you get um, bespoke product. We try and mass, mass produced product is usually made abroad, brought into the country and hallmarked in the country in the UK and then sold out through the shops. But um, the, the difficulty with a mass produced product is that uh, it's not made with the same care and attention no. that, that a bespoke product is. And we try and get as near to a mass produced price as we can. Um, and our prices are really good. But, nearly all of the customers we've had one one of the things they've been impressed about is uh the way we price things because we really try to make it as competitive as possible but every one of our rings is made by hand yeah. uh, and price is one of the things more. i know people panic about when they hear bespoke and they think it's expensive yeah, yeah. well the uh th there is um it's difficult to generalize about uh, what the price may be, but because it depends how big your fingers are, how big the rings are, how wide, it's how heavy. It's bespoke, isn't it? So, what metal. But, as is you know, the price. basic, if I can show you that this is my own wedding ring and it's nine carat gold. Um, where's the camera? And it, <laughs> it's mirrored. <laughs> it's, it's nine carat gold and it's a thin band. It's quite thick in its, in its thickness, but the width yeah. is three millimetres. Um, in nine carat gold, uh, that ring will be probably just around about hundred pounds. So, you know, I think I, I, I spend quite a bit of time whenever I, I to my wife's annoyance, when that, whenever we go out shopping, um, <coughs> I tend to spend it. <laughs> I think I'm hovering outside the jeweler shop's windows, checking out their prices. Yes, um, that's not what I charge for that. <laughs> no, um, and we live in we live in uh, we live in Kent, so our local big shopping centre is Blue Water, and I regularly, when I'm there, um, check out. E even so far as um, I dare I say this now, I've got my face on the screen as going into the shops and inquiring about prices for, for various rings, and. I would say do the same. <laughs> for, for a diamond ring, I regularly see a, a diamond. Uh, let me show you a diamond band, perhaps. This one, this one here is a is a. Oh, I'll put it on the I'll put it on the stand because then you you probably get a better better look at it. Let me just pop that in there. So this this ring here is. A two millimeter diamond band, two millimeter wide diamond band. I think it's got 16 diamonds in it. Um, a customer can have as many or as little diamonds as they wish. Um, I regularly see that one uh, for sale in the shops at a thousand pounds more than, than we're um, pricing it at uh, in gold. Crazy, isn't it? Uh, you know, the. the I understand that, that the high street jewellers have got shops to run and they've got staff to pay, and you know there are all sorts of reasons why that price is high. But 
Uh, You'd mind less, though, if it had the same care taken over it. And if you knew that in six weeks time, you weren't going to be posting in a Facebook group about how upset you are that that diamond has just fallen out and you've lost it and now you don't know what to do with yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I I think that the the difficulty is, is that when people are getting married, the cost of getting married now is so expensive for everything. I I think 10,000 budget could be spent uh, on a wedding with no problem at all. Yeah, I Um, think the last I saw the average was nearing 30. uh, Yeah, I'm not surprised. Mm. Um, when I when I remarried, I think that may change now with COVID. I think people's priorities might change uh, quite a bit, but it's quite high. Yeah, I, well, I know when I remarried uh, four years ago, we we spent over ten thousand pounds, and and you know there was that we got our rings for for free from the uh, from the workshop. We got um, the a, a good deal on the hotel because it was a weekday. Um, but the the, co- the cost of it up is, fast. is just ridiculous, and um, we really, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do when I started this was really try and help people because mm. the um, I, I, I'll probably get assassinated for this, but the markup in high street jewellery is ridiculous. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm always saying things that will potentially get me in trouble. I'll take the responsibility. <laughs> all right. <laughs> But you know what? It's the whole point in in being here and doing this and letting people see that actually there are other options and yeah. don't assume that going to the high street is going to be the cheapest thing to do because yeah. it's not necessarily. And and you know, once we the the difficulty online, I, I feel, is that you can't see the product. No. So it's difficult to know what you're getting. Um, if you're dealing with an online uh, retailer what we try and do is we try and and we're, we're trying to um, deal with the pros and cons of both high street retailing and online because by having the concessions in the shops uh, in the bridal shops what we're hoping to do is is allow people access to see the products yeah um, within a short distance of where they live. So they can travel to one of the bridal shops, book an appointment, go and sit down with the um, the staff in the shop. And we're training up the staff in the shop so that they have an understanding of, of what's involved. And they can take a fitting with the couple so we can get your finger sizes, we can work out in that consultation what type of rings you want, what width what thickness and then you can you can actually have a look through the whole of the sample selection that we have with the shops which is in excess of 200 rings yeah and get a feel for them get a feel for them put them on try them on see what they're like yeah um until we get to that stage where we've got those concessions opened uh we can send you the rings in the post the sample rings so once if you talk to us and and we get an idea of what you're looking for if we've got um some sample rings that are that are similar to what you're looking for we can send those out to you and you can try them on and you can see if you like them and you can see how they work with your engagement ring and um you you can make a decision you know having had the product in in your hands so what kind of things should people consider when they're deciding because obviously there's the obvious will it fit with you know sit against your engagement ring nicely but what other things should people consider for picking the right ring well uh the first thing i think it's different for um the the wife and the husband so if we deal with the the ladies ring first if the lady's wearing an engagement ring or Mm -hmm. Even if it's a if it's a, a, a fella, whether they're if it's if they're wearing an engagement ring, basically. Mm-hmm. So if they're wearing an engagement ring, what we need to consider first of all is what the what metal that engagement ring is made from, because the bit that goes around your finger is the, even if it's got stones in it, is made of a a metal. Yeah. Now, with gold, for instance, um, as the carrot gets higher 
the ring becomes more pure gold and pure gold is quite soft so really if you're wearing say an 18 karat gold engagement ring you really need to be looking at an 18 karat gold wedding ring otherwise if you go for nine karat gold or a different metal that's going to be harder than gonna the wear engagement. differently and it's going to wear it down. Yeah. Um, so actually, something that's something I wouldn't have thought of because obviously people would probably presume the more carrots, the better, the more expensive, the you know, the better. But for somebody like me, it's extremely heavy-handed. Actually, less yeah. carrots is probably better because I'm less likely to dent the thing. Yeah. Less the, the the lower carrot the ring, the more hard wearing it is because it's got more of a more of the other metals in it to make it harder. So uh, pure gold is twenty four carrots. And 24, you hardly ever see any rings in 24 carats because it's just too soft. And if you, particularly if you have uh, an engagement ring with uh, diamonds or other stones mounted into it, the, um, the claws that hold those stones in will be very soft and you only have to catch them and it, it will bend. Um, if, if you go back in time to your grandparents, uh, they would have had a lot of 18 karat gold engagement Do you know that's exactly what i had in mind when i said um i know i would dent it because i do normally wear my late nan's engagement ring yeah <laughs> um and when i very first inherited i had to have it flattened back out um because the inside was straight where yeah. presumably she'd you know been doing things just, with her hands it, and, and it flattened it out yeah 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 and what they used to do back in those days was have uh 18 karat gold uh shank which is the bit that goes around your fingers and then they would have platinum to hold the oh, stone, yeah for the claws so they were they were stronger than the um than the gold so th th that's one thing to consider um the next thing to consider is really what looks good with your engagement ring what will work with your engagement ring and the trend these days seems to be um back in your grandparents time it would have been a big um solitaire diamond or a triple diamond in the engagement ring and then a white plain band for a wedding ring which may have been exactly what they, it's exactly what they had the um these days these days the majority of the uh wedding bands we sell for um girls are diamond bands and they're similar to what would have been a, an eternity ring so um they tend to uh, have diamonds around the top of them um and whereas a, a, an eternity ring you quite often see with diamonds the whole way around mm -hmm. Uh, in a wedding in a diamond wedding band they go maybe a half or three quarters of the way around it's always best with any ring to have an area of plain metal at the bottom so whilst we have made full eternity rings full diamond rings for people with diamonds all the way around we would always suggest leaving a little bit of uh, clear metal at the bottom and the reason for that is as you age and your body changes and your fingers change having that area of metal allows you to adjust the size of the ring uh, to either enlarge it or reduce it yeah. if you have diamonds the whole way around and you want to make it a bit bigger you you literally have to remake the the ring from scratch um, That's crazy. It, and again if, if somebody is going to in inherit that from you I mean, yeah. I l somehow happen to have the exact same ring size <laughs> that oh, my nan had. Yeah. But yeah. had I not, I would have possibly wanted to resize that. And if that was an entire band, it wouldn't yeah. then have been my nan's ring, would it? It would have been something no. made from my nan's ring, and that opportunity would have been taken away. Yeah, if if you look, if you're looking at your nan's, for instance, engagement ring, where it's got a diamond held in claws. Then you can you can move the shank around without affecting the setting of the claws. Yeah. If the diamonds are set into into the ring itself, as with this um, this ring that I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. you think about it. If you alter the curve of that ring, 
all the settings of the diamonds will need to be re won't re be right anymore will they otherwise they'll fall out the other thing i think um uh, going back to your points about diamonds diamonds falling out of of rings um people do need to bear in mind that they are however well they're made they are very uh delicate delicate yeah pieces of jewelry and, and the, you know in in going back again to your grandparents day what would happen is that uh, your grandmother would keep her wedding ring uh, which would be a plain band on her fingers more or less the whole time the diamond ring she would be taking on and off the whole time when she was doing the washing looking after the children working in the garden or anything where it was likely to get damaged. get damaged these days people wear the rings the whole time and they tend to get bashed and um you know bumped around and it, it's it's you can never guarantee that a diamond won't come out it it's one of those things but um certainly if you look after your ring it, it should uh, hold good for many many years the one thing i would say and, and one thing that um is I, I see quite a lot coming up on facebook groups is that with a white gold ring um there there is no such thing as white gold it's 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 a misdescription by the whole industry because gold is yellow and it comes out of the ground yellow and it stays yellow when i said before about the the different carrots and, and and the other metals in it to harden it so with say nine carat gold there there will be nine parts of it that are real gold and the other 15 parts to take it up to 24 will be other metals and those other metals will be designed to make it stronger in white gold those metals are designed to try and lighten the color so they use a lot of white metals to try and reduce the yellowness of the ring once they get that yellowness down and they can never remove it completely but they can dilute it quite a bit then all white gold is plated um, with a very thin coating of uh, a really expensive precious metal probably the most expensive precious metal uh, called rhodium and that's what gives white gold rings their really gorgeous shine and, and look and luster when you see them in the jewelry shop windows the problem we have these days is that we keep the rings on all the time and we're constantly using hand creams uh, sanitizers soaps with chemicals in and very quickly the rhodium plating gets stripped off uh, that and it starts to discolor underneath and um, it's it's quite common to think that oh it's tarnished I'll give it a polish which which is exactly the wrong thing to do because if you make polish it worse. Off, you just make it worse um, yeah or, people don't know what they're buying do they and i think no. that's, that's and it, and it's really to, to me it's a it's a real misdescription by the industry because um it's not white gold well, it's there is gold that's gold. been diluted to attempt to look a different color uh, yeah and then it's been plated with a coating of something really beautiful which which you know will very quickly these days wear off and and people you, it i think it's okay if you make the customer aware of that um, yeah they just need to know what they're uh, buying and how to look after it yeah exactly and you know i would always suggest that people take their rings off when they're washing up or when they're you know just buy a dishwasher that's my alternative <laughs> or if they're in the shower or, or if they're using hand cream or sanitizer or, or any of that sanitizers um, and hand creams it's are terrible particularly good at stripping off the gold. yeah i haven't i've in that since lockdown i haven't really worn either of my rings for that exact reason just hand sanitizers all the time yeah it's, it, it's it, gonna well, damage them isn't it it's it's everywhere now isn't it the it is. um the if you if uh, a customer wants a, um, a white metal that is really durable 
and hard wearing than platinum is the one to go for it does lose its shine as with all rings they'll lose their shine after after a period of time and dull down but they polish because they're they're the same color all the way through they can yeah. polish up uh really nicely with just some some polish that you can buy from the hardware store or the department store so um the the type of metal is is uh matching those type of metals is important for people doing uh for mainly men but I'm, i won't generalize the um if you want a hard wearing whitish metal uh, so you don't want yellow gold or rose gold mm -hmm. then, uh, a really nice one for men now is palladium and it has a slight gunmetal gray tint to it i do like a good metal gray <laughs> it, and i it, don't suit a gold so <laughs> so yeah uh, even for me those are probably real yeah. We, my skin them, tone does not work with yellow <laughs> we, we've done them for we've done them for girls we've done them for men we've done them you know they they are they are a really good choice of ring so um, it has a slight gunmetal gray color it has that color all the way through so it doesn't change color with wear um and the, the one of the issues with palladium um i think has been that it has become really expensive and in is that it, a in, supply and demand thing or well it, it's to do it, it's not really it is supply and demand but it's not supply and demand in the jewelry industry because the jewelry industry only uses a small amount of palladium it's supply and demand in other industries okay. um, that are that want the metal and the metal is is not available in the quantities that they want so that consequently shoots the price up but with palladium um it, it as i said in 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 the same grade as platinum which is 950 parts per thousand it's it's at the moment i think it's more expensive than uh platinum wow. but we do a lower we do a, a a lower grade of palladium so we do something called palladium 500 and that's uh, in a sense, a bit like nine karat gold. It's it's five hundred parts palladium and five hundred parts other metals to uh, alloy in with it. What that does is it brings the price down, and it's not quite as um, low as white gold. But for uh, people who are manually uh, working and doing lots of things. Uh, with the hands, it's quite a good choice because it will last um, in its in its form when you buy it. It will it will be more durable uh, over the years to wear a ring of palladium rather than nine carat white gold, particularly yeah. because of the plating issue. And the um, it's a little bit more than white gold, nine carat white gold, but it's a lot less than platinum or palladium 950 yeah and and you want something that's that's going to last because in in theory you're hoping well that what's happening is going to last a long time yeah it, it's 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 uh it's a piece of jewelry that isn't a throwaway piece of jewelry you know yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's there for, you want it to be there for the duration it's blessed during the cer ceremony if you're married in church and um you know, lots of people have little messages engraved on the inside, um, which we can do. So it, it's it's an important piece of jewelry, much more important than the actual fact that it's a ring. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 very symbolic, aren't they? Um, so yeah. we are just over halfway. Do you want to have a quick talk through the images? That yeah, well, I just a... I just mentioned one more thing actually because yeah. you asked me about the odd shape of of people's rings. Yes. <laughs> um, so yes, we can we can take a cart, we can take a mold of your ring, we can um, develop that up on the CAD system on the computer. Um, what happens then is we will will send you the images of the drawing, and these days the images. Uh, that you can see um, that we send you are, are almost like a photograph 
uh, because the the uh, systems are so sophisticated. Once you see that, once a customer sees the drawing, if they say yes, you know we like that. Uh, the one, the last one we did that we sent out. The girl looked at the picture of her ring and decided she wanted some extra diamonds in because she wanted it to come further around. So that was a good time uh, looking at that image to be able to make, make that, that decision. decision. Once we got that far and she came back to us with the comments uh, and the changes that she wanted to make of that ring at that point, we then printed a 3D print in resin, which is an exact uh, more or less exact copy of the ring from the drawing and we posted that to her so she could try it on see the size see how it sat against her other jewelry and again another opportunity to come back and make changes if if you want and then once we get past that stage um, if once everything's agreed then we go on and we'll make the ring for real so by that time, the customer would have seen the drawing. They would have had 3D prints of the ring sent to them. I've got some 3D prints here uh, just sitting on my top here. So this is, um, try and get so you can focus. I don't know if you can see this. We can, yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is a 3D ring without the diamond. So you can see the setting. I don't know if you can see the individual setting. The little grooves where they would sit, yeah. Yeah, that's where the diamonds would sit. This is a 3D ring for a channel set diamond ring. Uh, and you can see there. You can see the difference, can't you? You can see the detail in it. You can see how many stones are in it. You can see how wide it is. Um, this is a 3D ring. Uh, 3d print of a ring with diamonds and you can see it's much harder to make it out actually with a with a small ring with them in yeah yeah you have to look quite closely yeah i think i can just make those out but it's i bet it's quite comforting uh for any couple to have all those touch points and to see yeah. how things are progressing well it's it's a really good opportunity to hold these prints and and put them on and see how they see how they are almost in in real time uh, this is just a plain ring so again we can use it to help you choose what width you want what thickness you want yeah because we because we can print them out and we can print them out in your sizes so uh, if we send those to you we can send those in your actual finger sizes so that you can try them on and see how they are the other thing I talking talking of size sorry the other thing that we send people um we can send you the ring exactly sizes. What I was about to ask you. <laughs> yeah. How do we you can, know? <laughs> we can send you the ring sizes in the post on the on the belt, which are um, all the different sizes there. Or we can send you this ring sizer, which is like a, an adjustable belt, and it's reusable. So both both um, both the um, uh, both people in the couple can can use it, and the, these are something like one pound fifty from Amazon, and I think they're really worth people buying anyway, because the one thing about your finger size is it changes depending on how hot you are, where you are, what yeah. you're doing. If you buy one of these and you get it sent home, both both of you can try it on at different times and, and yeah, get a yeah. sizing uh you know every day at different times or whatever and, and get an understanding of of what sort of size you are and what sort of size range you come within at different times because yeah it's much easier to do that than it is to try and get a ring resized if yeah. you have it, have it sent sent to you and it's yeah. uh it's too big or too small yeah well i like i notice of a morning when i put my rings on yeah. They, may, they may feel a bit tight, but throughout yeah. the day, all of a sudden they fit. Yeah. The important thing is that it goes over your knuckle because your knuckle. Let me just turn the lights on. It's getting dark. Yes, I've just started a twisting light round. <laughs> your, your knuckle is is one part of your finger that's sort of 
that tends to be the biggest part of your finger and and obviously the rings don't open and close like those sizes so you you have to be able to get it over your knuckle um yeah you don't want to be getting it cut off do you yeah and you just want a slight bit of of resistance when you try and take it off such that you have to twist the ring to get it back over your knuckle to get the ring off yeah. and that's that's about the right size so just before we uh, talk through the pictures of the, of the things you've already yeah. done, what kind of how long does this process generally take? How much notice does somebody need to give you? Because presumably people aren't going to be phoning you and saying I need a bespoke ring next week. Yeah, the um, the process itself usually takes um, about four to five weeks, um, and it's usually quite a good idea to leave a, a few weeks say two or three weeks uh, between trying to get the ring back and when you are actually getting married because if there's anything that you want changed if you want the size changed slightly it gives us a chance to take it back and to get it redone but yeah. if you allow if you allow five weeks um, that should gem generally be enough for, Give for you some notice. yeah now, and that's from the time that you order the ring so we were happy to spend as much time as you need uh, working with you to find out what's right for you. And um, then once you order the ring, it's, yeah, if you allow five weeks. Um, what we do is we take a 50% uh, deposit. And then when the, when the finished rings come in, uh, we'll send you photographs of those. Um, the balance is paid and, and we either deliver them or, or send them out we send everything out uh, if you're if you're not within a distance where we can deliver it by hand we will send it by um special delivery with the post office which then all the contents of the packages are insured up to two thousand um, pounds and they're guaranteed next day delivery so we've not had a problem with the post and, and getting things around that's always been very good even during covid fab so uh, presumably you cover all over the country then yeah i mean i'm actually based in kent and uh but i'm in and out of london the whole time my children live in buckinghamshire so i'm often up in buckinghamshire hertfordshire way uh but literally we've we've made rings for people all over the country um uh, scotland norfolk um it's it's everywhere and i i think we've really sort of concentrated on trying to give people as good a service remotely as we can give them when we when we see them and i i, I always remember the very first pair of rings that uh, we sold uh, was to a girl in scotland uh, quite high up in scotland i think her uh, partner worked on uh, oil rigs so they were they were quite high up in scotland and it was the very first picture i put on facebook um, that she uh, came back and replied to and we made both of her rings for less than she was being charged for one of them um on a on a good deal from her local jewelers wow wow so should we have a look at some of the images of, of things you've made before yeah, if I'm just saying, we have, uh, let me just show you this. We have, um, we have in our sample sets, we have uh, about 200 or so rings, um, which we can show people and let them try on. I'll show you, I'll just show you quickly the sample sets now with the camera. Um, so those are the, let me try and get you on there. So those are the plain rings, samples of the plain rings those those are the these are laser cut rings on this side so they have a, a more intricate patterns oh okay yeah yeah because they're cut with a laser um we have shaped rings which are standard shapes so you know we can try different standard shapes and if if a standard shape fits that's that's all well and good uh one of the popular ones is the um i could just find it here one of the popular ones is the crossover ring which is this this ring but with diamonds 
I don't know if you can I don't know if you can see that. Um, a crossover ring has a twist at the front. Yeah, I think it's just starting to focus. Yeah. Hang on, let me try this one. Let me put this one here. I might get you a better. Ah, yes. So that one's yeah. a crossover ring. It's got diamonds both sides and, and a twist just in the middle there. Um, then we've got uh, diamond bands here, which are um, micro claw set. Uh, they're always really popular. And then over here, we've got uh, patterned rings, again, which are, uh, let's try and find one for you, which are, so these patterns are cut by hand on a machine. So this one's just a matte finish with a, a slight groove at the top. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think the, the light is shining on it a little bit, but I think I can just yeah, see let where. Try, let me try and find a different one. So this one's got. This one's got. Oh, yeah, some multiple grooves in that one. Number of grooves. So these are all cut by hand. Um, and then we also do. Um, we also do. Uh, we do those in all the different metals, but we can also make them in. Um, two colored so we can mix the materials like yellow gold and rose gold together or gold and platinum yellow gold and platinum or something so um and there are some examples of those on the pictures that i'll show you shortly so um there's all sorts of things that, that we can do and, and the the thing that i find interesting is that even with all of those samples nearly all of the rings that we've made have been slightly different in some way as people have put their own spin on things yeah so let me let me click on i'll just bring them up we've got just over 10 minutes if we can just whiz through some of these and show some examples so is, is your yeah. um just while we're looking at these do you is your work hallmarked because you mentioned hallmark earlier didn't you yeah so it's part of the reason why why the rings take uh, four to five weeks because we have to send every ring away to be hallmarked by the government and the government hallmark, the government test the metal to make sure it is what we say it is and they hallmark it um, and then they send it back to us so if i just go through some of these and pick out some interesting ones in fact i'm just going to make the screen even bigger i'm just going to get rid of our faces and make that just that little bit bigger so we can see the rings a bit better. I'll have a glug of wine while while you've got my face off the screen. <laughs> can you see it moving up and down? I can indeed. Oh, great. And can you see my cursor? I can. Okay. Um, I'll, 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 I won't talk about all of them, but I'll just go through them quickly and pick and uh, pick out some bits. This This pattern here on the man's ring, is the most popular man's ring that we do. And it has a brushed finish and slightly beveled edges um, that are shiny. And that's a really popular one uh, with men. We've yeah, done I like those. Um, this is an example, uh, this one here on the left, of some engraving inside. You can see it's done with a laser, so it comes out um, uh, really well. Um, this was an interesting pattern. This was a pattern uh, that wasn't in the, the standard pattern book, but we brought it in because um, we thought it looked so nice. So it has uh, a sort of faceted center section, which really picks up the light when you're wearing it. You can see little bits of shine yeah. on this picture here. This one um, was uh, two uh, yellow gold rings with a sort of feathering um, on the edges, uh, which was really nice. And again, you can see the engraving inside there. I love you to the moon and back. We can get quite a lot of text inside a ring. Um, and, and you know, it's really clear to read. We can get dates. And uh, this one we, we did a fingerprint uh, of on this one here on the left. Uh, this was a double diamond band. So it was our... Uh, 
two mil wide bands but two of them fused together to which we made as one ring so it has a double row of diamonds um i think it had 32 diamonds in this one and the man's ring had square diamonds on each of the four uh sections so it had four of these square diamonds spaced out around it uh, and that was in uh platinum from memory and you can see them there on the fingers this was the crossover ring that i showed you earlier um, yeah. worn with a, a single stone which the crossover ring works well with a single stone because the cutout is quite nice for that this is um a dual color ring so it's white gold and yellow gold uh that works quite well doesn't it made together i think they look really nice uh yeah. these 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 uh bicolor rings we've also done this one with a white on the inside and yellow on the outside um but i don't think there's a picture of that here this is a really popular ladies ring this one here um it's par base set so um it has stones round stones in a groove but with little dots of gold in between so it really gives a, a sort of you don't see any gaps it really gives a good sparkle you can mm. see it on this picture here you can see the stones better um, and that's a really popular ladies ring uh, there's a shaped ladies ring here uh, which is one of the standard shapes but actually uh, went really well with the ladies engagement ring this ring here is an interesting one because it's the same ring as this one at the top but we've just put this mill grained edge around you see the little beads around the edge ah, yeah. yeah yeah just about and it's given it a real uh, it's difficult to see and, until kind you see text it. is it doesn't it just gives it, it that little something yeah it actually gives it quite a vintage feel funny enough um it makes it seem like a uh, like a much more of a vintage pan this is one of our uh popular well all of these three are uh, the popular um what we call micro set diamond bands and basically the diamond goes from edge to edge and it's held in four tiny claws uh, within the ring um, and these uh, again generally we would suggest no more than two-thirds of the way round to leave some solid metal at the bottom but we have done these in a in a full circle of diamonds um, because of the way these diamonds are set they really get the light into them uh, because the diamonds are held with claws and when you see them in daylight the sparkle and the radiance you get from from these rings is absolutely amazing uh, this was a shaped one um, it was a square stone held in two claws and we just made this shaped plain band to go around it when you see the two together uh, they look like uh, one ring uh, that, that looked really nice. This was um, a laser pattern. Uh, the standard laser pattern is leaves uh, that form the pattern. And the lady on this one said that she really liked roses. Um, so we found a, a drawing of roses that was uh, freely available on the internet. And we plugged it into the computer and, and we made this ring for her with the roses engraved on the outside That's this a lovely idea. absolutely loved it um with the laser engraving we can also do things like anything you want if it can go onto a computer as, a, as an image we can laser it onto a ring this one great way of personalizing yeah it's fantastic and, and you know i mean we've just got a spaniel here i was thinking the other day about getting one uh with a with a spaniel outline on it um and just as a just in silver as a little gift for my wife that's a lovely idea we are gonna have to unfortunately uh call it a day momentarily um you just give it two, I, two more seconds quickly yes of course Th this one was a lovely one we did for two girls this this is a, a white gold uh fast diffused with uh rose gold which uh i i i'm i'm when she first spoke about it, um, we went through the design a bit. I was really interested to see how it would turn out, and it was absolutely stunning when it came out. It looks and this one, this one um, is a, a palladium ring that we did for a girl, and she wanted a sort of cosmic feel. So we 
randomly selected yellow diamonds, white diamonds, pink sapphires and blue sapphires, different sizes and just randomly put them in. And I love that ring. I think it looks it looks fantastic. Very effective. Yeah, we've got men, men's kind of rings. We can set diamonds into more shaped rings. Uh, this was a, an unusual shape. Uh, this one had some sapphires in. This was the popular man's ring that I mentioned. Um, again, you name it, um, and there's a good chance that Amazing. we can do it for you. Yeah. So where, where can people follow you? Where can people see uh, even more of these? Um, you can get in touch with us on our Facebook page, Bespoke Wedding Rings, on Instagram, Bespoke Wedding Rings, or on our website, which is bwr-london.co.uk. And all of the all of the display rings are uh, photographed on the website so you can go through the whole list of the display ones but the important thing to remember is they're just a guide you can bring yourself into every ring that we make for you and and add your own nuances and bits of design and whatever you want and we can sort that out for you fabulous so uh, thank you for anybody who's watched. Again, if you've watched on the replay, please do hashtag replay and feel free to ask any questions. And join me at the same time next week when I'll be speaking to Amanda from... I think it's Amanda's Beautiful Ceremonies. It is Amanda's Beautiful Ceremonies. <laughs>